The objective here was to get email from my old Comcast.net account to come into my G existing Gmail account. And I did this. I pulled in all of my old email. It went into a label, which is kind of like a folder, but not really. Uh, so here was all my old stuff that was in, at my Comcast account. And in my inbox, it just swept, sweeps out. So let's look at this. This was sent to Vicky G at Comcast.net, but it came right into my Gmail account anyway. Not, uh, it was swept in. And I've also, also, even though I had this come into my inbox, I could have set it up to come directly into this account if I wanted to complicate my life that much. But I just want all of my managed email accounts to come into my standard inbox. So, got this so that when I compose, I have a choice of from. You don't have this on a normal Gmail account unless you've linked them. So I could send an email from either my Gmail account or from my Comcast account here. And that's what I'm going to show you how I did that. Before you start, you're going to need to clean up your contacts in your old account for best results. Uh, you've got to know your old email password. I know a lot of you have been logging in for years with dot dot dots and have no idea. Well, you're going to have to figure that out. And then lastly, you might want to look up your POP3 settings for your old email provider. Normally this just works automatically, but um, you may need these, so I would do this too. Let's see how I did that. I'm going to come over to the settings icon and I'm going to go to the settings under the settings icon and I'm going to go to accounts and import. Now there is a import mail and contacts and let's just take a look at that. Comes up over here. Okay, I filled in my email account. I hit continue. They asked for my password. So I fill it in and continue. And I get a chance to import contacts, import mail, or import new and import new mail for the next 30 days. That 30 days kind of goes with uh, if you have an email with a internet service provider when you terminate your contract with them they usually give you a 30 day grace period and this will stop importing at 30 days. The problem with this method is it often takes two days to complete so I'm going to cancel this and show you a different way. I'm still on setting settings 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 and a accounts and import but instead of going to the import mail and contacts I'm going to come down and check mail from other accounts and I'm going to add that email and just like last time I'm going to fill my uh, old email address and then I get this confusing thing that says gmailify my accounts and that's for IMAP where the uh, accounts will be synchronized and only works with a few kinds of accounts or import emails from my other POP3 accounts. This will import uh, emails and import your own copy. They don't, don't synchronize. So this is the one we want to use so that if we delete something from one place it's not going to do, do it to the other. And I'm going to click Next. And again, I have to fill in my password. And I get some interesting things. The pop server stuff 
is fine for this account. You might have to make some changes. Uh, they have different ones and we want to do the one uh, this is the correct one for us. I have an option to leave a copy of a retrieved message on the server. Who would want to do that? Well, for those Mr. and Mrs. accounts that a lot of you guys have, you might, and you're setting up your own, you might want to leave a copy so that your husband can see them too. Uh, or your wife, excuse me. Always use secure connections. Always do this. It's safe. And remember I had that little label that was kind of like a folder? If I want all my new messages that I sweep out of there to go into that area, it um, I would check this, but I don't want them that way. As I said, I want mine in. Um, I want them in my inbox, and then I hit Add Account. And yes, do I want to be able to send email? Yes, I do. Next. And the same name, next. And then it asks for my password once again. And I fill in my password and add account. And then I have to go back to my old email address and click on the link in the email or fill in the number uh, that they sent me and hit verify. Either way, and I'm good to go. That's all there is to it. And now I've got a send as and a check for. I want to continue using this. If I lose control of that account and it goes away and it starts throwing errors, I've got to come back down here and delete this account. But for now, it will be good. I set up one of these and it ran for eight years. It's still running. so. Also, if I ever had to change my uh, password on the original account, I can come in and I just hit Edit Info. And I can go in and then the next step would be to refill in the new password. Simple as that. And then your final step would be go uh, to send something to your old address and make sure that it comes in and to look to see what you've got in your um, in your folder that's labeled or your label that has the name of your old email account on it. And that's it. Except for those contacts. The first order of business is to export your contacts from your old email provider. This will be under a contacts page or an address book. It varies from one to another. Uh, then you're going to want to come down and you'll look at the options. If you see one that exactly matches your new provider, like if it says Google CSV, or Gmail CSV, you'd want to use that, but any CSV would do, or a VCF file. VCF files include uh, contact pictures that you might have, so that's another uh, option. Depending on where you're going, you might want to try both of these. It doesn't hurt you. Let's just go with the Outlook CSV, even though I'm going to Gmail, this is what I'm going to use, and I hit export, and it will tell me the file I'm, I'm downloading and you'll need to note that because you're going to have to find that when you're in your new email and you want to import that so take note of whatever file it sent out. Now we're going to navigate over to our contacts page where we'll find our controls to add, import and export. They're always on your contacts page. Now here we are. We're going to come 
and look around. We don't see anything that says import and export, so we're going to come up to more, and there it is. Import. Choose a file. There's the Outlook file that we did before. We're going to say open it and import. And at this point, you might get a message about merging your contacts because Gmail has something against having contacts with the same email address and different uh, names. And if you look at their preview, they collapse all your people into uh, one, one or, or the other of the names if they just have the same contact. So I had Joanne as a monitor for the computer club and it was like, what is this? Who's Joanne? And then it's like, oh my goodness, they, they combined Kevin and Joanne and Joanne now became a monitor. If you're, if you're a Gmail user, I would strongly suggest you export your uh, contacts periodically because once they go to the new version of contacts, you might lose half your people if you don't. And that's it. We have now imported our contacts and everything is done.